I love the fact that we humans have been creating stories for such a long, long time. And I've created a picture book celebrating two incredibly old tales from ancient Mesopotamia with exquisite illustrations by Kate Durek. You can see the first of these tales, The King and the Wild Man, on an earlier session of my YouTube channel. But for now, here is the second story. I hope you enjoy it. Yeehaw! Two Tales of Brothers from Ancient Mesopotamia Retold by John Heffernan Illustrated by Kate Durack Story number two The Brothers Battle the Beast In the mountains beyond the city of Uruk there was a great forest of cedar trees. This forest belonged to mighty Enlil, father of the gods, and was guarded by a ferocious beast known as Hambabba, the Bull of Heaven, a huge creature that was part bull, part man, part monster. With a roar like the wildest storm, and a breath the fire of death, Hambaba terrorized the countryside, raiding villages, attacking caravans and merchants, and killing travellers. The people of Uruk were desperate. They prayed to Enlil, begging him to, to control the creature. But the father of the gods took no notice. In the end, they called upon their king. Gilgamesh understood his people's fear. Yes, the beast must indeed be stopped, he declared. But how? asked the elders of the city. The bull of heaven is ferocious. Gilgamesh laughed. Ambaba does not frighten me. I will enter the sacred forest with my brother Enkidu, and together we will slay this bull of heaven. The elders gasped. You must not, O oh magnificent one. It is known that all who enter the forest die. No one has ever returned from its dark recesses. I have spoken, Gilgamesh insisted. It will be done. So it was that the king had special armor made for Ankidu and himself, with weapons to match, swords of the hardest iron, finely balanced spears, hand-picked arrows that flew deadly straight and like the wind from bows of the best willow. Special horses were chosen as well, and the king's finest chariot readied for the quest. Early one morning, as the sun god climbed into the sky, a magnificent golden chariot made its way through the streets of Uruk to a fanfare of drums and horns. Ankadu was at the reins as Gilgamesh surveyed his people, both warriors dressed in gleaming armour. The people of Uruk cheered, but also wept, fearful that their king and his brother were entering the jaws of death. Don't go, they shouted. Don't leave us. Gilgamesh heard their cries, and on reaching the city gates, he held his sword high, silencing all. Fear not, he cried, grasping Ankadu's hand and holding it high as well. We will rid our land of Hambaba once and for all. He slashed down with his sword, its blade slicing the air like lightning. At once Ankadu gave his reins a flick, whereupon the four war steeds reared up and galloped away. The golden chariot speared off into the cloudless sky, becoming one with the sun. Enkidu drove the horses hard all morning, reaching the forest as the sun god climbed to the top of the sky. When the chariot skidded to a halt, thousands of blackbirds burst from the forest, blocking the sun and screeching to the heavens. But far louder than all their cries, was a roar from somewhere deep in the forest. Ah, Humbaba is calling to us, Gilgamesh sneered. We must not keep him waiting. As Enkidu steered the horses towards the forest, the trees miraculously parted, creating an avenue into the woods. See, 
Gilgamesh laughed. Nothing stands in our way. Perhaps not, Ankadu replied, glancing back as they travelled deeper into the forest. But see how the trees close behind us? Could this be a trap? Gilgamesh laughed. Um, Baba will be no match for us, no matter what traps he sets. Presently, the warriors came to a wide, circular clearing. This is our arena, said Gilgamesh. We're waiting, Humbaba. Come and fight. The ground began to tremble, and the woods shook. The air filled with the rumble of a stampede, followed by a shuddering roar. In the next moment, whole trees splintered apart as a huge beast burst into the clearing and charged the warriors. Enkidu urged on the horses, but before they could gallop out of the way, Humbaba slammed into the chariot, splitting it in half, scattering spears, arrows and bows. Three of the horses fled into the woods, dragging scraps of the chariot with them, but one lay injured where it fell. The king and the wild man were hurled high into the air, crashing to the ground far apart from each other. Ankadu landed close to Humbaba and readied himself to fight the beast. But the bull of heaven did not charge him. Instead, it turned on the injured horse, threatening to gore the steed to death with its massive horns. Coward! Ankadu yelled and ran at the bull beast, throwing himself onto its back. Humbaba tossed and twisted, kicking out with powerful hooves, lashing with deadly horns. Ankadu hung on tight, dealing blow after blow with his fists, but the beast was too fierce and too strong, eventually tossing the wild man from his back. Ankadu was hurt in the fall, but still scrambled to his feet as the bull turned on him. Come, Ankadu shouted, staggering backwards, wincing with pain. You'll have to do better than that to beat me. The beast glared at Ankadu, snorted and struck at the ground with its hooves. Then it bellowed, the roar shaking the trees to their roots and charged. Gilgamesh saw this and was already running from the other side of the clearing to save his brother, but he knew he wouldn't reach Enkidu before Humbaba did. So he stopped on the spot, steadied himself, aimed well, and hurled his sword with all his might. The weapon shot through the air and struck the beast, sinking deep into its heart. The huge creature skidded to a halt and reared up on its hind legs. It shuddered from head to hoof, howled long and hard, and then crashed to the ground, dead. Ankadu stared at the beast lying before him, knowing how close he'd come to losing his own life. Thanks be to you, brother, he called to Gilgamesh. Without you, I, I would have died. He staggered again, almost falling to his knees. Gilgamesh rushed to his side and threw his arm around the wild man, supporting him. What else could I do? the king replied. We are one, you and I. Without you, I too would die. A great silence settled across the cedar forest as the king and the wild man gazed in wonder at the monster which had once terrorized the area, but now lay motionless. And as they gazed, the very trees themselves seemed to open to the sky. A soft golden light shimmered through the leaves, showering the warriors in a luminous mist. A moment later, the horse that had been injured stirred and stood. Shaking itself all over, the steed ambled across to the men and stood with them in the liquid light. Come, brother, said Gilgamesh. Humbaba is no more. We have been victorious. Let us return to Uruk with the good news. The king helped the wild man on to the horse, and they set off for home, knowing that the people of Uruk would be overjoyed 
with the news of their victory.